Dress me like a lamb for the slaughter Pour me in your cup Should've known we'd bring trouble And trouble gonna find you here Trouble I was one way when you found me I was not the one you see And the only thing that happened Was this stranger in between And you can say your eyes are open You might think your hands are clean Till the wind blows in To kick yourself in ways you've never seen Till I'm scraping the bottom, make my well run dry. Shake them coins, I know where you got them. Kiss me, kiss me by. Should've known we'd bring trouble. Trouble gonna find you here. Yeah, trouble. Stranger in between You can say your eyes are open You might think your hands are clean Till the wind blows in The dirt kicks up In ways you never see All right, it is Sunday night, 7 o'clock Eastern, and uh, I got a nice, fun, enjoyable, something you will enjoy, something you will find fun. I've only got two or three adjectives to describe tonight's live stream, but I'm going to keep saying them so it sounds like more. But uh, it has been a long week here in Utah. I'm actually sitting here in Utah right now, and uh, Friday night I was up till 1 in the morning filming after a very, very long week. Uh, we're going to show you a recap of how it's been going so far. It has been extraordinary. I can't wait to share with you a few things. Tonight's live stream, uh, here's what I got in store for you. So I've got some announcements that you're going to want to be aware of. So I would encourage you right now to actually, whether it's your phone and your, in your notes app or you have a piece of paper and a pen, just have those ready because there's a few things that I'm going to be sharing with you tonight that you're going to need to know and remember. Of course, as always, I've got some discounts for you with the gift store and time for Mother's Day. I'm bringing out the brothers, Joel and, and Luke Smallbone from Fort King and Country. Before I bring them out, I'm bringing the Thunder Brothers. Uh, George and Abe are actually sitting five feet away from me right now, getting ready to join us and uh, chat with you a little bit about season five. The, uh, already we've gotten a couple of questions from you about, uh, about George and Abe that we're going to get into. Uh, I'm going to be taking multiple questions, so you can start putting your questions in the chat now, and we're going to be tracking them, and so later I'll be taking some of your questions on. You've got plenty about season four. Yes, I do have an update on season four, the timing. I will be getting to you uh, some info on that shortly. Uh, at the end of the live stream, I got a little bit of a personal anecdote to share with you, uh, something that uh, 
we just found out about that uh, we want to share with you as part of the Chosen Family, so please stay through to the end of the live stream. You're going to want to hear that. And um, also, these updates that I've got for you, some announcements about some things that are coming up in the next, like some in the next couple of weeks, some in the next few months. So again, stay tuned for all of it. If you are watching in YouTube, uh, say something right now in the chat, even if it's just to, to, to type in the number one. Uh, chatting, in the, uh, chatting in the chat room, uh, hitting the like button, hitting the subscribe bell, uh, the notification button, bells, all those other things, commenting, uh, sharing, clicking the share button, and then going to a text, like texting it to someone. All of those get the live stream in front of more eyeballs. So start doing that now. We've had many people who've discovered the show because of your efforts in the chat room uh, on YouTube or on Facebook. Same thing. Do it on Facebook as well. Start sharing it if you're watching in the chosen app. That's always where we would prefer prefer you watch the show if you can, but the live stream you can watch wherever you wherever you want. But if you're in the Chosen app, thank you for that. We do actually have the Chosen app now on multiple TV and uh, mobile devices, and so just search for the Chosen wherever you get your apps, and you should be able to find it. So first things first, I'll just I'm I'm, gonna, I'm not going to spend too much time on gifts this time around. We've been giving you discounts throughout because of the season four delay. I've occasionally been given on social media or through my text community uh, the big discounts because we're trying to get you stuff as 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 cheaply and as quickly as we can. But in time for Mother's Day, I did want to point out a few items that we are spotlighting at the Chosen gifts.com www.thechosengifts.com George and Abe are wanting to harmonize so badly uh, and they begged me to join uh, but I just said this is mine this is something that only I can deliver and uh, so thechosengifts.com you're going to want to go there in fact the mug that I happen to be drinking right now the you are mine mug uh, one of my favorites because I've always said uh, J Jelaine, who's here which is the mug that I said the mug is so sturdy that if you threw it at Jelaine it would kill her that's this one, yes. Okay, so the You Are Mine mug is beautiful. And again, it's facing you. So when you drink it, it's a, you know, some of our gifts are outward facing, like the shirt that I'm wearing, one of my favorites. I was one way, now I'm completely different. And the thing that happened in between was him. Him is referring to God, not a, a guy. Um, but uh, so, so dudes can wear this shirt. Um, but uh, th this shirt's been around for a little while, but uh, we've been seeing people on social media asking like, hey, when, when you know, can, can I get that shirt? And like, yeah, it's on the gift store. So this, is, this one is, again, outward facing. Um, all of our gifts have some sort of message or theme that's meaningful, that communicates outwardly, and then some of them are communicating to you. So this is the You Are Mine uh, mug, also very firm, uh, and also probably likely to kill Jelaine if I threw it at her. But the one that I most talked about, uh, Steve, you told me, how am I supposed to open this? Oh, yeah, yeah, here we go. So this is the, uh, the mug with the coffee, the fisherman, Fisherman's Blend. Yep, Sons of Thunder, Fisherman. Uh, the Brazilian Dark Roast, always my favorite. Um, but it, it's the mug, and this is the mug that is so sturdy. Yeah, she, it, well, it's rubber paint, is that what you said? I don't know what rubber paint means. It just looks nice, thank you. But this is one that, yeah, Jelaine is acknowledging that if I threw this at her head, it, uh, the mug would be fine, but she would not. That's how firm and sturdy the mug is. Um, not necessarily the best marketing tagline, but uh, it is true. But here's why I'm uh, mentioning all these things to you. These are all coming in bundles. So this is, we've got a Mother's Day bundle extravaganza. I think there's something like 18 special bundles you can choose from. And, uh, so, and, and if you get any of the bundles, I know I sound like a pitch person here, but, um, but it's all true and we're all excited about it. Uh, the, the chosen 2024 calendar is not too late. This has got some really, that's the least cool part of the calendar and I opened right to it. Uh, that's the preview. Um, but look at these really, really cool colors and or th these pictures. And I also, we made sure that it's not just, we're not just trying to promote the cast or promote the show. Uh, we're trying to really include some uh, quotes that, uh, that, that are from the Bible or from the show that are actually meaningful. Oh, look, look, George. Uh, I love the beginning. I love how God simply spoke and the world came into being. That's you. You're in the calendar. Are you in the calendar, Abe? Yeah. I haven't looked all the way through. Yeah, I, I have, actually. I just don't remember. Uh, let's see. Messiah, Peter, uh, Matthew. Uh, oh, no, Andrew. <laughs> Mary Magdalene. We're not there yet. There you are. Okay, good. <laughs> um, yeah, this is a really cool quote, quote from Big James. I actually don't understand most of this. Just pieces here and there when good things happen. But the rest I'm just following. Uh, speaks to the faith and the passion of uh, Big James. 
uh, which is matched by Abe, who plays him, which is, uh, which is beautiful. So uh, these bundles include like the, the devotional books. Uh, my wife Amanda and her writing partner Kristen did the bulk of the work on these. But uh, this is your chance. These devotionals, 40 Days with Jesus, one for each season uh, that go deeper into the stories and into the Gospels. And then, of course, this is the, I want to make sure I show it right side up. This is one of the sizes of the paintings. This is the Don't Let Me Go painting um, from the uh, season finale of season three. And so uh, make sure that you uh, just check out the bundle options. Uh, it's perfect in time for Mother's Day. We got a bunch of discounts and all of that at thechosengifts.com. All right, announcements. Uh, these are things, these are save the date announcements, okay? So uh, the first one I want to tell you about is not coming until September 20th and 21st. So mark that date down now. What's that? But the, the both are the 20th and the 21st are your birthday. Um, yeah, so the 20th, September 20th, uh, is George's birthday, and I'm assuming you'll be there at Chosen Con on your birthday to celebrate with everybody. And uh, so there were going to be thousands of you are going to get to join us. I'm not allowed to give the location yet. Cheyenne is burning a hole in my cranium uh, saying you can't give the location yet. And here's the reason because uh, tickets aren't on sale j just quite yet. We don't want people just gobbling up all the hotel rooms. So uh, we will announce the location uh, soon on May 6th, yes? So when tickets go on sale, May 6th at 10 a.m. Eastern time. So I want you to put two things in your calendar. Number one, May 6th, Monday, that's a Monday, uh, 10 uh, a.m. Eastern, we will announce it on social media. You want to be following us on social media, making sure you're getting emails from us. And uh, that's when uh, we will announce the location and tickets will go on sale. And uh, September 20th and 21st, that's a Friday and a Saturday. And uh, I was just about to give the location, but I'm not going to do it. Um, uh, but uh, mark that down in your calendar so that you can reserve those days if, in fact, you want to be at ChosenCon. It was an extraordinary experience this past year, and uh, it was really overwhelming. And we always do some surprises. We do some advanced uh, trailers and scenes that you can't get anywhere else. And then we'll also be online. So if you can't be there in person, uh, you will be able to watch it uh, online, I think in the app as well, uh, prop, prop, possibly, prop, we'll see. But uh, you'll be able to watch and be part of it uh, that way if you can't make it in person. The next thing that I want you to be aware of is 5 and 2 day because that is coming up on Thursday, May 2nd. So that is just a couple weeks from now. 5 and 2 day, why is it 5 and 2 day? Why, uh, do you guys know why May 2nd we would call it 5 and 2 day? Well, but why 5 and 2? Because May is the fifth month. Yeah, fifth month of the year. Yeah, yeah, you knew. Uh, the, yeah, yeah, the second, yeah, tougher questions, he says. So on 5-2, we go crazy. And uh, it's where we're going to be on set. We got a, it's like an eight, eight hour live stream. And uh, you're going to get insights into the set. You're going to get, the actors will be part of it. We'll be giving out huge discounts. We just go crazy. Five and two day is our opportunity to thank you uh, because of the five loaves and two fish. And so we figured that was the perfect date to, uh, to make that chosen day. And uh, five and two days. So this is our chance just to say thank you and promise uh, you will get something out of it. So make sure that you put that in your calendar as well. Five, two, and uh, it's going to be awesome. I'll probably be filming on, uh, at that time. So I probably won't be able to join for too much, but usually I try to pop in. But you're going to get to see everybody else, which I know you're looking forward to because you've seen enough of me on some of these live streams. All right, so uh, we're going to bring out George and Abe in just a moment uh, to chat with them, and then we're going to have... I, got, I had a conversation with uh, For King and Country. I'm going to take some of your questions, but I know that one of the main reasons you might be here is because of season four. So as you hopefully know, uh, we released a video just a few weeks ago where I mentioned that I had some bad news, which is that the streaming release of season four was going to be delayed. It was in theaters for a time. You were able to see the whole entire uh, season in theaters. Uh, then because of the streaming delay, we put it back in theaters at a discounted rate and uh, did a bit of a marathon, and so a lot of you were able to go see it then as well. We're doing everything that we can to give season four to you as early as we can, as cheaply as we can, uh, but unfortunately, there are some legal matters that we are dealing with. I can't get into the details of that, so please don't ask. Please don't try to figure it out. 
Uh, there's been a couple articles that have come out that have uh, investigated a little bit. It, it, it's just irrelevant. The point is, is that we are in the midst of a legal matter that is delaying the release of season four. Uh, the reason for the legal matter is, is multiple things. Uh, there's just lots of things that have happened in the last year and a half, two years that have led us to this point. And one of the big things that we are trying to make sure that we do, and everyone involved is trying to make sure that the show is sustainable long term. As I mentioned in the video, um, this is a free show and less than 5% of you actually pay for the show, pay to see it, pay uh, to donate to uh, Come and See, the organization, the nonprofit organization that uh, provides production fin financing. Now, uh, I'm not saying that as bad news. In fact, uh, sometimes that's good news. The fact that so many are able to see this show for free all over the world is because of you who do you choose to donate, or if you can't donate, just pray for it or spread the word about it. So many of you have, uh, have had a huge hand in making sure that this is one of the biggest shows literally in the world. But unfortunately, as we all know, including our actors sitting here, as we all know, um, if we were on a studio, uh, pro, uh, if we were on a streamer or on a network, uh, the money would be significantly higher. Uh, these uh, organizations have, companies have billions of dollars at their disposal. And whenever a show uh, starts to look successful, even if it's not profitable just yet, they know it's going to be. They start pumping a lot of money into it, pumping a lot of money into the people involved. And uh, we just don't have that luxury uh, because we are a free show and the vast majority of you who see it uh, get to see it for free. And so uh, there are certain things that we have to do and that we've been involved in, I'm, again, I'm be speaking a little bit generally, uh, that we're going to have to do to uh, allow us to be economically sustainable for the long term. And so uh, I do, though, have a little bit of information on the release date. Now, I don't have an exact date for you. Um, I can tell you that the moment that we get a decision uh, on the legal matter, we will release it the, the, the Sunday after the decision. And so what we do know is that unless there are some legal shenanigans, unless something goes awry, which we don't anticipate, uh, it should be released to you sometime in the next four to seven weeks. It won't, it, it, it highly likely won't be longer than that. So I've been seeing numbers like uh, it could be six months. I've seen people say, I don't even think it's going to be released this year. None of that is true. Uh, it should be within some, uh, should be within the next four to seven weeks. Again, I do not have an exact date. I do not know for certain. But uh, the moment that we are, are uh, we know that the results of the legal matter, we will release the show show will be released however it's going to be released. At the very least, it will be in the Chosen app, of course, for free, but uh, that will be uh, within this timeline. So uh, please stay tuned because when we, as soon as we know, we're going to release it. And so uh, we don't want to be caught, if, if you're really eager to see it, you want to be caught flat-footed. So please stay tuned to our social media regularly, and I promise you that we will be giving you updates as soon as we have them. So um, I know this is no fun. I know that this uh, is highly unfortunate. No one is more upset about it than I am. Uh, no one is more eager to get you the show than I am. Uh, all of us want it to get to you and, of course, want to keep it free, and it will be. And so uh, as soon as Season 4 comes uh, uh, free and, and via streaming, we will get it to you. I promise. So thanks for your patience in that. Uh, uh, one more thing I wanted to mention is that uh, when it does come, one of the things we're going to do is release it twice per week as opposed to once a week or like we've done in the past where maybe the release takes a little longer. We're going to be releasing two episodes per week uh, probably on Sunday and Thursday, but we'll, we'll, we'll have all the details of that when we get to it. But uh, the release window will be shorter so we can get episodes to you quicker. So I know you've got uh, questions. I know you've got frustrations. We hear you, um, and uh, more will, more will, we'll be able to talk about more sometime in the future. All right, so with that, Season 5, I want to give you a quick update on that. We actually have a behind-the-scenes video, a short little uh, insight into uh, what we've been doing over this last week. And uh, when, we, when, uh, when that video is done, it's a, it's a little less than a minute when that video is done, George and Abe will be sitting right next to me, and we will be uh, taking some of your questions and also giving you uh, an update on what we're doing and what, uh, just a little bit about them and uh, playing these great characters that they've been playing. So uh, with that, let's check out this uh, recap of what Season 5 has looked like so far. The Chosen is back and Season 5 is in production. We're getting all set up for the next big scene of Season 5. All right, here we play. Okay, here we go. And 
your mug. Hey, this is the one that uh, nearly missed your lane. Yeah. <laughs> now, if I threw it at Abe's head, it would just bounce off. <laughs> like, and, the, uh, like the rock. Like the like, rock like in the, season four. Yeah. Uh, Pharisee. Can't get too many. Not everyone oh. has seen season four. Oh, God. Yes. But uh, part of it's just because you have a massive melon that can withstand almost anything, and Jelaine has the delicacy of a squirrel. So we just got to be, you know. But, but anyway, that's a, it's, a, it's a great mug, isn't it? You know, I, I actually I own this I own this box. Same, I've had same. the I've had the you coffee. Actually have the, the, yeah, and the I, coffee's good, the right? Ground the coffee I put good. in a French press. Oh, very nice. And it was very lovely. And then I put it in this mug, and that's like my favorite mug now. This is what I use. See, I I, I and this merch like the merch is fantastic. Yes. Like, we don't call them merch. So, well, sorry, sorry. Yes. Aussie is the translation. Yes. But these get, they're, they're amazing. I clearly have been using them, and I love them. Yeah, yeah. Comfortable. And, I gifted this box to my mother-in-law, so oh, there lovely. it is. Mother's Day coming up. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, the week so far, we've been filming now. Yesterday was, uh, Friday was day seven, and uh, that was, we, we did two, two days week one, and then the, five, the, the last uh, five days of the last week. Uh, how's it going so far? Well, it, it's been really fun. It's yeah. been, um, yeah, like almost feels like we'd never left. Kind of. There's a feeling well. that yeah, that's that was, truly yeah. unique uh, about this season. It's it is this is like weren't we just here? And so there's this like get to work component um, that's just happening, and everybody's working as hard as always. Uh, it's amazing to see so many cast members back together again. You, you forget like the grand scale <laughs> of what it takes yeah. to make this thing come together. Do yeah. people know what's being filmed in the last week? Yeah, so uh, I have been trying to keep this somewhat under wraps, but it's gotten out a few times. And I don't think it's a huge spoiler because people know that it's Holy Week. So right. Holy Week begins with triumphal entry. <clears throat> um, I, 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 uh, I haven't wanted to spoil it for anyone who hasn't seen season four and how season four ends, but... At some point in season five, we do the triumphal entry. So I'll just give that away. And we were filming it this past these past few days. So cool. Talk about the moment, and I, we were we all experienced this at the same time. So we've had six hundred of you on set, uh, dressed in the garb. Uh, it's been extraordinary. They look fantastic. Well, we we for the triumphal entry piece, we had you guys further back. And so the first shot that we did was you guys coming up a little bit over a crest. And then you see the city of Jerusalem out in front of you. And we have these huge blue screens, because of course we're going to replace the blue screens with uh, the effect of how Jerusalem would have looked like in, in the first century. And there were 600 people all lined up, coming forward, raising palm branches, mm -hmm. chanting, singing. We had worked out a, a song that, that fits what would have been done and said in the, in the first century in that moment. There was two Romans on horseback coming up. But that first take where you guys are coming up and say, talk about that moment. Because I remember when you guys came back, some of you were crying. I mean, it was, it was yeah. overwhelming. Well, for, for, for me personally, like growing up, like I'm not sure how similar the <clears throat> Easter experiences are across like different denominations, but being Greek Orthodox uh, and experiencing that when I was a kid, that's what that felt like mostly to me, which is magical. Uh, for those who have experienced an Orthodox uh, style Easter, there are the palm leaves and the chanting and stuff, and people go and walk around with the palm leaves, and they walk around the church, and you have to close down whole streets. And it, I mean, yeah. this is the definition of closing down a street. This was, you know, <laughs> it looked like, I mean, well, back no, then. Gates. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was very special. And uh, hearing the chanting as well, I, it was, it was, it took me back to, you know, that, that you know, cultural heritage that I have. You know. Sure, which is awesome, but I think even that, and I've seen that before, and I've been, in, in, in America, it's, it's, it's probably a little more of a formal, not sterile, but environment than the Greek Orthodox. It's mm. usually in a church, and maybe they pass out some fake palm branches because yeah. they don't want to hurt anybody. And, uh, but it's, and, and you have a, a wonderful church celebration, but uh, in, in Greek Orthodox and in some traditions overseas, you'll see people out in the streets. Yeah. But this with the backdrop of the actual, the, the look of the first century, you know, like the, how, how, this, how, the, how our Utah set yeah. looks and the people all dressed in first century garb and you're actually portraying John and Big James yeah. in, in the moment. It's yeah. also brought that to life, by the way. Sure. What I've been doing as a kid, right. you know, all these yeah, years, that's been brought to life by what I just saw in front of me. Yeah. There, there's this component of, of uh, 
right? You hear, you read, and you can, it, it's almost relegated to the past once you read it. Right. And every time that we're on set, it's happening. Right. So it brings things to this immediacy and the experience can be overwhelming. It is overwhelming, it's, yeah. it's incredible. And then you actually start walking through the corridor of people on both sides. They're waving, they're singing. We had it at full volume. They're right in your face. And we've got uh, Jesus on the donkey coming through. We go into the city and, we, and then we pick it up there. I mean, it was so cool. it was one of the greatest moments of my life and, and career of just because it looked so visceral. And, uh, and I just can't wait. I mean, I know we've got a long way until season comes out. But. <laughs> well, I mean, one thing that, you know, we, we try to do maybe with Easter is to, you know, experience and, and, and try to understand what that would have felt like. And we... It just feels like we did that on, yeah. in the last week. And people who will get to see it, you know, in the future on screen will probably be feeling that same thing. It is so authentic. Yeah, yeah. The people were saying, I, I had multiple uh, Chosen fans saying, I'll never see Pumps Under the same way mm -hmm. again. Yeah. I, I, and they were crying all the way through yeah. all, all day, all 12 hours of filming. We'd still be doing the last take. And uh, they were still uh, excited and crying. You so were a little bit as well. Oh, I, yeah. I, no, yeah. no question. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was very emotional. Um, it, was, it was beautiful. Just the privilege that we get to, mm. to recreate something that happened so long ago, but yet uh, has relevance today. So we've had a couple questions come in. Uh, this uh, first question uh, coming in from, uh, from Steve N. Uh, here. Uh, have you started acting like real brothers after playing them on screen? You, you know, this, this thing, it's like, it's like the the fact that we play brothers on screen is not what makes us act like real brothers. The 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 fact that we're discovering in this weird sort of serendipitous that th we have so much in common. Mm. Uh even down to like <laughs> both of our brothers I was have <laughs> Both, Both of our, of our brothers, respective oh, older brothers, the have same leg age, injuries apart from us as well, have hurt their legs. So, I mean, yeah, I don't know what it is. Uh, we have to text each other to make sure that we're not wearing the same thing I'm to these wear interviews. This again. <laughs> the rod and gun shirt. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know, man. It, it's a little more complex than that. It's like the, the answer, Stephen N., is yes. Yeah. <laughs> we also, um, but we're also kind of also like I feel like the you know the Power Rangers when they're out of their costumes they still wear their colors like I'm wearing green and you're wearing blue which yeah. is kind of like our characters as right, well. Right, yeah. <laughs> no, it was and, and and it didn't come easily or I mean it came, ended up coming easily but when you you coming into season two as uh, as Big James uh, fit right into the cast immediately you were amazing in terms of welcoming him. Yeah, uh, George, you were you were amazing. I mean, that takes a lot of generosity from the from the cast 100%. to know. All right, this is going to be challenging, but we're going to make it work immediately. And and that's how you guys are with I think, and I think you're you're especially that way with newcomers because you know because I know how it feels. One hundred percent. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's been really cool. Uh, Susan Matura from the Chosen Insiders group. So on Facebook, you just look up Chosen Insiders, and uh, it's a page where we get you stuff that you uh, pictures and behind the scenes stuff that you can't get anywhere else. Uh, and she asked this question, I know you are doing some heavy scenes. How do you all decompress after those scenes? Uh, it must be difficult, must be hard. So, uh, yeah, in this season, we haven't even gotten to, I mean, the, so far we've gotten, we've done mostly the really, the really amazing ones, the, like the uplifting ones. Um, but there, we already did one um, mm -hmm. where, where John is, is getting upset. I mean, so emotional scenes, challenging scenes, scenes where you're, you're making sense of what could be, Oh, for example, like uh, season four, uh, this, is, this isn't a huge spoiler, but the, 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 the brothers come to Jesus and ask, can we sit on your right and left hand? It clearly gets Jesus very upset with you, right. and it's just a very vulnerable scene. So how do you guys, when the day ends, all right, that's a wrap, you guys can go home, do you, or is any part of that still with you? Do you have to decompress, or how does that work? I, I definitely try and decompress, and I don't know if the exact emotion's with me, but I do feel this electricity of just having done something. And so I try to prepare myself for what it is that I'm going to offer the, that day, uh, whether it's, you know, we're, we, we can generalize extreme anger, extreme sadness, extreme joy. You always walk out with this electric feeling like you've just been pulsed by something. And that takes a little bit of time to decompress. I personally like to just be in silence. I don't like to hear anything. I don't like to like, it just needs to be some quiet so I can get back and maybe kind of cover everything that, that I offered up again. You know? Yeah, because yeah. Yeah. you don't want too much of what you, you're doing in the work to, to bleed 100%. into. Yeah. Uh, 
into to, into your real life. What about you? And and like I, th- I think yeah, we're starting to experience more. You know, this season, especially like right off the bat, we had some pretty emotional scenes for season five that we've already filmed. But um, I think it's a, a way that we decompress as we're all there for each other. I kind True. of you know, you know, we, we go through these moments sporadically as the seasons have gone. But now that things are kind of ramping up towards seasons five, six, and seven, uh, I we we got some firsthand experience of that the other day. And you know, it's a simple hug between all of us, a, a hug to, yeah. to to Jonathan or. That that's often a way you decompress because it's just a, a you know an embrace is, is an outpouring of emotion and because we're all there for each other as the cast it's really it, it, it's not simple and it's not easy but that definitely makes it easier yeah, because sure. we're all there for each other. Yeah, you know, I see it occasionally before a take, um, you know, to kind of get into character. Jonathan especially needs this to try to just connect, look in the eyes. You guys tend to do that a little bit for each other, and then afterwards, yeah, if it's really heavy. Uh, uh, there's always this kind of mutual decompression that happens, mm. which is really great. Um, so uh, compared to the first couple seasons, uh, we just got this question in, the, the, uh, do your roles feel different now? So how, how have the characters grown? How have you grown since uh, seasons one, two? I think like we're finding so, such a different purpose for our lives. Um, and the, the realization of, of what that purpose is is so much closer than it's ever been at, at, at any other season. Um, so you go from fisherman to our father letting go of that business and then oil, but there's still something more. And that purpose is becoming super clear this season to some of us. Mm-hmm. And, um, and it's really uh, kind of making things interesting. Mm. And I think one of, the, um, one of the symptoms of being hyper-emotional and sensitive as, as the Sons of Thunder are, and, and in particular John, is uh, you can get those impetuous outbursts as we've seen in the earlier seasons, but we're now seeing the superpower of mm-hmm. that as the season's going on. John has this ability to notice something and connect with someone and you know, he, he, can, he can feel if something's maybe not right. And he, he has the ability to maybe say the right thing or do the right thing without even knowing. Uh, so we're kind of maybe seeing John ex- move into that territory now. Yeah, we've always written, um, and this is this, there's <clears throat> indications of this from Scripture, but we've written, both of you are, tem- you know, tem- intense and passionate and temperamental, both characters. He's a little more on the emotive side. You're a little more on the studio si- studio side, meaning mm. his your knowledge and behavior comes a lot, a lot of times in your immense knowledge of Scripture. Remember in season two, two episode right. three, mm. we we... we dig into that a little bit where you're uh we're or, talking about Zachariah yeah, the yeah, prophecy. And he knows the prophecies more he's he was you know and I, you imagine in class he was the better student mm-hmm. and uh but you're a little bit more intuitive mm-hmm. but they're both uh in season five as Jesus is so clearly this is one of the things we struggle with in the writing is to us looking back it was so obvious Jesus was actually telling them I'm going to die and they're just like you know mm-hmm. uh, can we sit in your right and left hand and, <laughs> and they're just not picking up on it um, I would say that that John's probably the closest of the twelve. Mary Magdalene's in first place when it comes to her intuition. We see that in season four. John's probably in second place again because of, like you mentioned, the superpower of his emotional connection to Jesus. And then I think you're shortly behind because you're also like you know the prophecies, and so right. it's like, and you and Philip are kind of like, man, this is, prophecies match in this behavior, and uh, so that's some of the things that we're, we're seeing the maturity uh, come increased as as the seasons go by and then of course some of the things that happened in season four you know some of the tragedies some of the good things also are, are informing how you're how you're behaving so we really do try as writers to 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 build an arc that goes over the course of multiple seasons mm. and you guys are trying to of course track that as well and, and see maneuver where, through it yeah, and exactly because we do also we film out of order you know? Right, right. So the, one of the first scenes you filmed this season was like in a super intense emotional scene mm. with Jesus, uh, you know, that takes place later in the season. And uh, and then you've got to rewind and go back to the big joyous part, you know, at the 100%. beginning of the week. It's just... Uh, More important than ever, I have a, a document that is several pages long that tells me where on the map I am. Right. And so when that scene comes up, I can always go, where did I come from? Where am I going? And yeah. that, can yeah help <laughs> yeah, absolutely so uh sue hicks on uh, facebook can you please do some promotion down under she's referring to australia yes yeah. um but uh you're gonna go to australia all the time because you are from there yeah oh absolutely i'd love i've actually already kind of done some promotion for those who are in australia you may have remembered uh if you had the chance to come we did a season three premiere uh for the well, we did the the finale and uh actually the, the cinema got sold out in cronulla 
uh, at the Hoyt Cinema and we had to request a bigger one. We ended up selling out a 120 seater or so. And uh, they were so like that they'd never heard of the show at this at this uh, uh, cinema uh, outlet, and so that they saw all these people coming, and we had we sold out the original one, so they put us in a bigger one. They're like, what is happening here? So that's the power of the chosen family, right there. Yeah, yeah, and uh, <laughs> obviously the United States is always the hub, and it's where things have grown the fastest. But now it really is starting to take hold, and some of the things that we've done in the states to till the soil for larger efforts uh, are happening in other countries as well, including Australia. So yeah, you'll, we're, we're, we're doing what we can, but again, it's not on a mass scale in Australia just yet, but, but it will get there. But you can do your part in helping uh, spread the word there. Uh, have you two been working out? Lupita uh, de, de, de Leon uh, on uh, <laughs> Facebook wants to know. Yeah, uh, yeah. We're going to the same gym right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're going to the same time. gym. Yeah. It's also uh, the the amount of walking that we do in certain scenes, I, I don't think people realize we can easily cover eight miles in one day. That would not be uh, yeah, that's an exaggeration. Um, so that, you know, just you got to stay on your calories, don't go overboard. There is a culture now amongst most of the disciples and most of the people on, on set. There's like now this culture of, uh, yeah, working out and you got to take care of the instrument healthy. because yeah. uh, these conditions will test any actor. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and again, a culture just has developed. We're always sharing health tips. We're always, yeah. you know, we got a little pull-up bar on set usually, and and uh, yeah. you're getting, you, everyone's getting their steps in. But again, you're looking around, you're going, okay, to do this, this is really hard work, and 12 hours a day, mm -hmm. and then the prep in between, and uh, it's just really, really exhausting. And I think almost by necessity, we're like, all right, it's time to mm. time to get in gear here. 100%. Um, 100%. So anyway, thanks guys. Uh, Thank you for uh, being part of this. And uh, tomorrow, are you on tomorrow morning? Yeah. yeah. We, uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 we're on. We yeah. play. Both of us. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we're getting right into it again. Two more weeks of, of the 600 people a day, which has been awesome. That's been too cool. Uh, yeah. You, whether you're coming to the set or coming to Chosen Con or participating in Five and Two Day or just on social media or whatever, we do feel it. It does give us that energy boost uh, in, in spite of just all the challenges and exhaustion. Uh, hearing from you and seeing your efforts makes it worth it. And, Absolutely. And we, we talk about that even amongst ourselves. It's not something we just say publicly, privately. We're like, man, these people are so passionate. We can keep going. You know, yeah. as hard as it is, we can do this of course. Uh, because they keep us going. So thank you. I'm going to keep, uh, I'm going to take a few more questions okay. that have nothing to do with you. So, so we'll uh, right. get out of here. Get out of here. Yes. Uh, so um, that's very noisy. So I'm moving. Moving here to the eh, to the center, um, we've got a couple more questions that have come in, and then I'm going to take more questions. I've got this uh, for King and Country conversation. You're not going to want to miss some really cool things there that are coming up. I'm going to take a few more questions right now after the for King and Country chat. Um, we'll take a few more of your questions, and then, uh, like I mentioned, I've got some uh, something very uh, important and personal and uh, time sensitive to share with you uh, that uh, you'll want to be part of as a member of the chosen family. So uh, how am I doing, Colin? Am I, am I centered right here? Okay. Okay, so uh, at what delic red, de delic red, I don't, I'm, I, uh, I'm not sure if I can pronounce that properly, probably pronounced it wrong and it sounded weird, uh, but uh, they ask, is season four ever to come on Prime? So Amazon Prime uh, has se the first three seasons, Peacock has the first three seasons, and Netflix has the first season here in the States and more seasons uh, in other countries uh, in addition to the Chosen app. Now, if you want to watch it totally free, no subscription required, uh, then you're going to check out the Chosen app. And uh, that's where we've also got exclusive content you're not going to get anywhere else. But on Amazon Prime, for example, there's not only the first three seasons of The Chosen, there's the Jonathan and Jesus documentary that came out a couple months ago. You're going to want to check that out, especially if you are a Chosen fan. Uh, so it's called Jonathan and Jesus. Check it out on Prime. Uh, Amazon Prime has really been great, uh, been, been excited about the project for a long time. And uh, so again, if you have a subscription there already, uh, you can check out the first three seasons. Peacock also, you know, long before The Chosen was cool, uh, Peacock was uh, in on it and wanting to, 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 to have it uh, to exhibit on their platform. So the first three seasons. Season four, uh, not sure just yet. Uh, it will come out uh, in The Chosen app. We know that, of course, for sure first. And then uh, at some point, it'll be available on other platforms, uh, including television. So just stay tuned for that. Um, but uh, yeah, it will it will get in certain places eventually. Of course, the chosen app. Uh, Brian on Twitter on X asks, "Will all episodes be released at once?" Uh, as I mentioned before, no. It'll be twice a week, so 
Um, the, the, the all eight episodes will come out over the course of a month, basically. So quicker than normal, uh, just because we're trying to really get them to you as soon as we can uh, once they are available. Uh, C. Baker asks, uh, are we headed to the direction that the Chosen will no longer be free? Absolutely not. The Chosen will always be free. Now, the question may be timing. Um, you know, sometimes we have to put it in theaters first, not have to, get to put it in theaters first because people want to see it on the big screen. Uh, so sometimes uh, we do that out of both desire from the, from, the, from the viewers, but also necessity. We do have to come up with ways to generate income in order for us to be sustainable. Uh, that's what the gift store is about. That's what uh, the streaming releases on other platforms are about. Um, but those are modest. We don't get the kind of income uh, uh, just from the streaming, uh, from the free streaming that, uh, and from the donations to come and see that are enough to, uh, to have us be sustainable and to do future seasons and uh, do all the things we want to do and do these live streams that, with all the equipment and all the people that we have. So uh, the, um, what was the question again? I'm yeah, or, or, so will the Chosen no longer be free? But, but uh, there may be delays at times like there are now, but the Chosen will always, always, always be free. These seven seasons that we make, uh, regardless of the timing, uh, will eventually and always be free. And once they are free, they will always be free. So once season four comes out uh, in the Chosen app for free, it will always be there, right? So uh, you'll always get a chance to watch it for free all over the world. Uh, another question also looks like from Brian on X. Can we know what is causing the delay, even if it's after everything is resolved? I pay attention to where my money goes, and if some entity is causing issues for the chosen, I'd sure like the opportunity to evaluate whether... Yeah, so um, this is... Um, all you need to know is that there are legal matters happening. Uh, this is not about uh, someone causing problems. This is not about some... Uh, you know, I want to I be, be careful that we're... That we're um, gentle, graceful, uh, assuming at the, ve at the very least neutral intent about everyone involved. Um, so we're trying to get it resolved. Um, obviously, there are sometimes disagreements, sometimes problems that arise, um, but uh, it's all in the name of trying to get this show to the world and uh, get it in to the world in a sustainable way. So um, yeah, after all this is resolved, we're still going to be moderate and gentle and graceful and generous to everyone involved. Um, it's really about, and I think what you care most about is the show itself. Can you watch the show? Where can you watch the show? How can you watch the show? And the content we've always said, let's uh, judge the show and enjoy the show on the content. And some of these extra issues um, we, can, we can handle. Um, uh, Adalis Marrero, uh, if I hope that pronouncing that right, or Adalis, um, I just heard that season four is being shown in my church on May 2nd. How if it's not? How is that possible if it's not streaming yet? So the first four episodes have been uh, offered to churches to show it publicly in these public screenings around uh, the country, as, as they're basically preview screenings. So it's not the entire season, but it's the first four episodes uh, are are uh, being shown in churches and in prisons, uh, which is really cool. Um, but uh, the entire season won't be available uh, until it's on streaming. Uh, but yeah, we did give. We are allowing this window, so check it out. Uh, look up. If you just go to the Come and See website, Come and See is again the nonprofit organization um, that is uh, that help uh, d because of your donations to Come and See allow uh, allow them to finance the production costs of the future seasons, and they are also the ones who are generously working to provide this to churches. You can also check out sermon.net, www.sermon.net, if you want more information on where uh, where churches might, where, which churches might be showing this. Uh, one, uh, just a couple more questions before we go to For King and Country. When you start streaming season four, will you have the after show again? Please say yes. I love them. Of course, we will have the after shows. In fact, we have already recorded uh, them. And so when season four comes out in streaming, uh, it will be... Uh, after every episode, we'll do the live streams here, and then after that, you'll be able to watch only in the Chosen app. The after shows are only in the Chosen app, uh, where you can go. In fact, the season three after shows are there now. You could go watch those, but uh, Chris and Jelaine host those. There are Chosen Insiders, and there's interviews with cast, all of the cast, almost all of the cast you can think of have shown up in these after shows for season four. You'll hear from the writers. You'll hear from me sometimes, but yeah, the after shows are really, really cool, and they are only available in the Chosen app. Just a couple more questions about gifts here. Uh, Celeste on Facebook asks, when will we receive our 
pre-ordered DVDs of season four, same time as the release. Yes, so as of right now, you can pre-order the season four DVD so that as soon as we release it on streaming, you will be able to get it on DVD. Unfortunately, we are not able to release it before then. So we do appreciate you pre-ordering it, um, and that just means that you're going to get it quicker. So the moment that season four comes out on streaming, we will get the season four DVDs to you. So, uh, yeah, they're on the uh, gift store, www.thechosengifts.com. Uh, you can pre-order those season four DVDs right now. Carol Barnes Newman asks, I'm curious if the devotionals and Bible study books will be in the store soon. They are in the store. Uh, the first three seasons of the Bible studies and the devotionals are in the store. Season four Bible study and devotional book, uh, are not in the store yet, I don't believe, right? Um, you could find them if you want. If you do some digging, I'm sure you can find them somewhere because uh, there has so, uh, they have been released in a couple of places, but they're not in the Chosen Gift Store. Um, and uh, as soon as Season 4 comes out, uh, we'll make it available in the gift store as well, the Bible study and the devotional books. The reaction to the devotional books and the Bible studies has been overwhelming. Uh, in fact, we just found out that the um, season four Bible study, the pre-order of it already got us into the uh, bestseller list uh, in the Christian bookstores. And uh, this has been a big deal. Um, and we just hear from people all the time, like uh, Carol, just when is it coming out? When's the next one coming out? It really takes you deeper. It's really beautiful. Uh, are there any new, de new designs? This comes from Stephanie, uh, also on Facebook. Any new designs on the horizon? The only reason I'm asking is because I bought it all already and I want more. Also, if Dallas puts this comment in the live stream, I might actually die. Well, um, the good news is we do have some new uh, designs coming in soon. The bad news is you might be dead and uh, not around to actually order them. So rest in peace, and uh, I'm sorry about that. But, uh, but for the rest of you who are still alive, um, the uh, gift store, yes, we after episode, let's see, three of season five, four, uh, we have a new shirt coming uh, with, a, with, a, with a cool phrase on it that I think you'll appreciate. So, uh, yeah, we, we, we're always working. We're always got, got new stuff coming. Uh, Gree Powers, G-R-Y. I don't know if that's a misprint or if that's actually the name. If so, cool. Will zippy hoodies be an option soon for purchase, please? Oh, zip hoodies, zip up hoodies have been an option for years. Some of my favorite stuff. Zip up uh, against the current hoodies, zip up... Uh, uh, What's the, uh, sometimes you got to stir up the water. Uh, yeah, plenty of zip-up hoodies you can find. The gift store is full of things, so uh, full of gifts. So check those out. Um, when will the season three poster book be, be available? Uh, we stopped doing the poster books after seasons one and two. Uh, they're pretty expensive to do, and um, what we're going to do is at the end of the seven seasons, we'll do one big, huge poster book that you will love. Um, but, uh, yeah, each, doing one for each season uh, just proved to not be quite as efficient, so we will get those out eventually. A uh, couple more questions here. Amanda working on study book season four. She's finished. She's now working on study book season five. Uh, I love the study books was the comment. Yes, uh, I do too. They're beautiful. Um, is your dad working on the fourth book? Uh, that's the novel. So my dad, Jerry Jenkins, the author of the Left Behind books, written over 200 books, uh, love, writes the novels, the novelizations of each of the seasons of The Chosen. The fourth one, uh, yes, is done. He's working on the fifth one now. Just stay tuned. Uh, as, soon as, as soon as we got them for you, we will get them. That's really profound. As soon as we got them for you, we will get them to you. Um, that's why they pay me the big bucks is to that kind of articulation. Yes, uh, books are coming. More books are coming and they will come soon. Uh, and is, uh, that's going to, most of them will come out during the season four release, which we have much more to tell you about. All right. So we're going to show you, our, uh, after this next video uh, conversation that I had with Joel and Luke Smallbone, I'm going to answer a few more questions. And again, I've got something uh, I really want to share with you uh, that's deeply uh, personal and time sensitive. Uh, so, uh, please uh, stick around for that, and I'll be taking more of your questions. But uh, I did a conversation with Joel and Luke Smallbone from Four King and Country. And uh, yes, part of it is we wanted to talk to you about their new movie that's coming out very soon that I want you to check out. And we talk about uh, their music and their connection to The Chosen. But yes, we also talk about their very personal connection to The Chosen and uh, their passion for it. And uh, so check out this conversation. We were thrilled to have them on. They were thrilled to be here. And uh, we'll show you that right now. All right, my uh, my good friends uh, Luke and Joel are here with me. And guys, uh, I have been to some of your concerts. I've been to several of your concerts, and uh, it's overwhelming. But uh, listen uh, to 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 you who are watching. 
you have to go to a Forking and Country concert. I'm just telling you, mm-hmm. it's a different experience even from the album. And uh, it's one of the things that makes me love you guys so much and love your music so much is because of how much heart and soul you bring to your concerts. Now, all that said, right now, there are more people watching than have been at the concerts that I've been to with you. So please just make sure you don't screw up because there's a lot at stake right now. So, We're so stressed. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We're so stressed. Yeah. So are you ready to perform Drummer Boy right now? Uh, yes. Okay, good. Come. But I don't want you to. So they I just, told me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I'll get to I'll get to singing in just a second, but I want to uh, first uh, I want to first talk about um, how I came across For Game Country, how I came across you guys. Uh, obviously, I knew who you were, and I knew your sister a little bit, and uh, and uh, their father, who we'll talk about in just a moment. Uh, David Smallbone is a legend in the music industry, and uh, I remember it was my son who came to me and said, uh, "Check out this video for Little Drummer Boy." And I know this is the story for a lot of people. But that was, for me, a significant moment, not just for music, but I think in in our space, in this, Mm -hmm. in this, in in, in the music space, in the faith space of absolute excellence, uh, absolute passion applied to uh, what had otherwise been a simple song. And so just for, for, for those who are not familiar, overly familiar with For King and Country, what is the heart behind what you do? I mean, it seems like you yeah. guys take a sim- take simple melodies and uh, whether it's an original song or a song that some people have heard before and say, all right, we're going to do something new to it. And do you go into it thinking big or do you go into it thinking different? I mean, what is what is the heart behind what you guys are doing? Because it is different. Yeah. Well, hey, Dallas, first of all, I said this before we started the live. Thank you for having us. Of course. Um, you know, we feel such a connection with you, friends, supporters. My wife is Bathsheba or Bathsheba, as it is uh, more appropriately said, uh, in The Chosen. Um, and we're cheering you on. We love what you're doing. And we love that that aim for excellence. I mean, you're literally doing it with The Chosen going, hey, this is the story of Jesus. It needs not as the greatest story right. that has ever been told, but it needs to be told right. as the greatest story that has ever been told. And so... That's our heart, man. I mean, we we had came into this thing. Our sister, Rebecca and James, uh, went ahead of us, and we're so grateful for her. Um, Luke and I are brothers, for those of you who don't know. We're two of seven kids migrated from Australia to the United States. Um, Dad was a concert promoter in Australia, and our sister started singing. He needed cheap labor. We became the road crew stage managing, you know, uh, background vocals, lighting, and so on. And then... Uh, we launched into for King Country, which was a very hard endeavor initially. Mm-hmm. But the the mission was, for me at least, was this. Um, talking about the religious arts, it was, I got really frightened that my environment was going to impact me. But a mentor of mine said, you're so frightened about whether your environment's going to impact you. You've never thought to question whether you all and mm-hmm. striving for excellence in God's name could impact your environment. And so, man, from that day to this, with the King Country, and now even stepping into filmmaking, that's been our passion is is for the greater the greater cause, but to do it worthy of the story that we're trying to tell, like Drummer Boy, like Baby Jesus, like right. like Jesus in ministry, it all kind of comes back to that storyline. We don't normally have uh, guests on uh, on our live streams too often, but I want to tell you why we have Joel and Luke on is because I've actually had a chance to see their movie Unsung Hero. And uh, they're going to talk about the story, but I've had a chance to see it. And uh, I was uh, blown away. But we do have a question that I wanted to read to you from a viewer, uh, someone by the name of D. Jenkins. That's kind of interesting. It's a coincidence. He said... Uh, cousin? Uh, Must be. Cousin. Yeah, I don't yeah, know, if it's, yeah. A, I don't know if, it's a, if it's a male or female, but, uh, but they say, um, so you haven't won enough music awards and sold enough albums. Um, so do you have to come into Dallas's territory and make movies. Is this all about getting another K Love Award? How do you sleep at night? Um, it seems a little more How aggressive. Do you sleep at night? Um, I'm not sure why uh, they. I hope. I, I, really, really, I really, really hope this is a jest. D, D. Jenkins. <laughs> what can I tell we D. Love Jenkins? D. Jenkins. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, t- well, t- talk about. For, yeah, just 
uh, talk about the story uh, that that this is based yeah. on, and then we'll get into yeah, why yeah, yeah. why you wanted. So to So originally born in Australia, uh, hopefully you can still tell it is true. Uh, Americans uh, who are watching, you have jacked D, up. D Jenkins has jacked, yeah, up, jacked our up our accent. accent. So thank, thank you much. for that. But born in Australia, our dad was a concert promoter in Australia, and on one particular tour uh, that he brought back to Australia, the tour didn't go very well, and we ended up losing everything that we had uh, as a family. We lost the house, we lost the car, yeah. we lost the life savings, and so. Dad was looking for a fresh start for his career, uh, for the family, and uh, he got a job offer in Nashville, Tennessee, and he thought it would be a good idea to move his six kids uh, and his wife, who was six months pregnant. 16 suitcases. 16 suitcases to Nashville, and that's exactly what we did. But soon after we arrived uh, in Nashville, Dad lost that job. So Australia on the other side of the world, no friends, no family. Uh, We were sleeping on beds made out of clothes. Uh, We weren't quite sure where the next meal was going to come from. Didn't have any way for our little sister to be born in a hospital. Uh, Didn't have a car. And uh, the list went on and on. And we really struggled uh, as a family for our first couple of years here in America. And I've told some semblance of that story at at pretty much every Fakian country show for the last 11 or 12 years. And I've had a lot of people come up and say, man, like Luke, you know, you and your brother, you guys should write a book. And uh, the truth is, Joel and I were homeschooled, so we don't read or write very well. And so we thought, <laughs> shout out maybe, to the homeschoolers. Maybe we could. Uh, maybe, Jenkins is that's right. Maybe so. Maybe we could make a movie instead. And and look, to, to be honest, uh, uh, D. Jenkins makes a great point. But our our vision has always been to impact people through their ears and through their eyes. Yeah. And obviously, I think you hopefully feel that at our concerts. Hopefully, you see that through the music videos. And the film is not. It might feel new to some. But my heartbeat behind it is I believe in the power of family. I think family is more important today than it ever has been in the history of the world. And uh, yet we don't value it quite the way that we should. And the the kind of the thesis statement for the film uh, is this. Mother Teresa says, if you want to change the world, go home and love your family. And that's kind of how we've gotten to this place of uh, making a movie. Whenever a friend uh, like you guys uh, asks me to watch a film or to check something out, I'm always a little nervous because it's scary. Well, because yep. I have to be, I, I, I always say up front, just so you know, I'm going to be honest. Yep. Uh, I can't yep. do it any other way. Um, Particularly, wh- man, when musicians start think yeah, have the well, audacity right. to right. think that they could make a movie. Right. You know, because because I'm going to uh, in a couple of weeks, send you my my demo album. And I'm going to ask you to, because uh, because now that you look you've, forward to that, yeah, that Dallas Jenkins' <laughs> musical venture, the co- co-creator of uh, creator of the chosen. Yeah. Let's go. yeah, well, just as D Jenkins pointed out in his in his in her, or her question, I don't know who or it was. Her, yeah, her, yeah. Her, yeah. We don't know. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're going to encroach on 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 my category at the K Love Awards, I'm going to try to compete on your on your level. Oh, yeah. her, but, on her category, sure, whatever, Wh- whoever yeah. it may be. Yeah. Hypotheticals. Yes. So I went to an advanced screening uh, a few months ago and. I was so, I had two emotions. One was relief because I'm like, okay, when I see Joel afterwards, I'm going to be able to say positive things. But then also genuine excitement because uh, as, as you mentioned at the beginning of this, this is not, The Chosen isn't even mine, but the, 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 the movie and TV industry, all jokes aside, are not anyone's in particular. We're all trying to do mm-hmm. the same thing. We're all trying to tell great stories. There is a connection between what you guys do even in your concerts and what you do and what we do as filmmakers is we're trying to tell a story and we're trying, it, it, we're trying to portray something through different lenses. And when I go to your, some of your concerts, I'm inspired as a filmmaker. And I'm sure when you guys see great films or TV, you're sometimes like, all right, that gives me an idea for something. And so Absolutely. The, the film, the reason that the film works so well and the reason why I'm excited for people to see it is because it's so personal. Any filmmaker will mm-hmm. tell you, and w- whenever they teach at film schools and whatnot, it's always like, the best chance you're going to have is to tell personal stories. Tell what matters to you. And I'm so glad yeah. that you guys yeah. didn't, as one of your first, because you guys have done a project before, um, uh, Priceless, which was also a, a very good film. But uh, that was many years ago. But for Joel, you're, uh, as a co-director on this, this is your directing debut. To come out of the gate, you didn't try to, I use this term, drink wine on a beer salary. Meaning you're not trying to do oh, that's good. a huge, big epic on a lower budget yeah. or, you know, you're, you're, you're like, okay, what, what do I know best? I know the, our, our family story. And so right. because it's so personal, it feels universal. And, uh, mm. I, it was very moving. It was very honest and your directing and producing were, um, I, I, I think I use this term with you. It was mature. It didn't feel like a first time effort. It didn't feel like you're just throwing things up against the wall. It felt mature. And, uh, I'm telling mm. you, uh, you who are watching, you will get something deep and personal out of this film. 
And uh, it's not just a music video. It's not just a, a collection of, of uh, you know, greatest hits of, of the Smallbone family. It is a personal, beautiful story that you don't have to know uh, for Gigging Country or Rebecca St. James to appreciate it. It really is powerful. Mm-hmm. Um, so w- w- the question Very I kind. wanted to ask is, why, w- what led you to, to, I mean, again, joking aside, what led you to have yeah. the conviction yeah. to say, all right, we're going we're gonna to make it as a movie and we need to do it ourselves? Our sense is, and we've seen this as musicians, the closer you get to your own heart in art, the further it reaches out into someone else's. Mm. And so setting aside all the other stories that we could tell as musicians particularly, but even as wannabe filmmakers, we went, listen, this is our family story. This is sacred. I mean, so much so that you mentioned I co-directed it, co-screen wrote it with Richard, Richard Ramsey, but I also play our dad in the film, um, which I've dubbed a very expensive therapy session. Uh, but all jokes aside, I wanted to do it because it was like, this is my heart. Like, I know this man. I know um, what he stands for. And so, and, and aside from that, man, we love Australia. This is an Australian film. We loved adventure. It felt like adventure when we were growing up. It's, you know, it's drama. It's, it's music. It's celebrating mums. It's celebrating miracles. It's celebrating family. And so we just felt like we didn't know that Obviously, Lionsgate would be releasing it in, from what I've heard, more theaters than any faith family film ever. We didn't know that they would even pick it up. We didn't know we'd end up here, but we did it. It started like your Easter play as a deep passion project. Um, and we're so excited, man, to, yeah. to, to, to release it to the world and humbled by your comments, really, truly yeah. are. Yeah, and Lionsgate has really stepped up. Lionsgate is uh, the distributor and financier of the feature film I just made, The Best Christmas Pageant Ever, right. um, which I'm fin- finishing up now as we're also filming The Chosen. That's coming out later this year. But Lionsgate has really said, we understand and know that this audience is out there. And so they saw your film and uh, and, and loved it and want to get it out there. So that's really cool. We want to make sure that you do, and we'll talk about this in just a moment, about where people can, can get all the information. Yeah. But... It's important to see this in theaters. It's important to tell Lionsgate. It's important to tell theaters, thank you for making this commitment. And let's show that this was a good investment, that this was the right choice and that there's more that needs to be mm. made like this. Mm. Uh, you mentioned, you hinted at this earlier, Joel, uh, before we go. Yeah. Uh, there are, you know, tens of thousands of people watching right now going, all right, so what is the, what is the connection? Is there, is there a further connection? Do you really actually like The Chosen? Uh, you do have a little bit of a personal connection, especially to season four. Yeah. I saw a video yeah. on your social media where you went to see it in theaters. Uh, did I you sure actually did. like it? Would you have given it a 98? I, you know, I know not all of us can reach those great heights. I'll tell D Jenkins to relax, but uh, tell, tell us a yeah. little bit about your connection to the show. I like D Jenkins passion, by the way. She's, she, I'm going to say she's a, she, she's awesome. <laughs> yeah. She's, I mean, you should just hide about it. Demi, behind. you should just Demi, hide Demi, behind. Demi, Demi Jenkins. Yeah. Debbie. You should just hide behind that persona, by the way, whenever <laughs> yeah. you're like upset at somebody, another this producer is, on the trip. Really, trip. really uh, obscure. You know, D. Jenkins <laughs> says you didn't produce very well on this yeah, episode. Yeah. You know, yeah. No one will be able to crack no one will be able to crack that code. Uh, that no, yeah, no, no one. No one. You, you gotta sometimes you gotta go so close to the thing that no one would ever guess. <laughs> right. Um yeah, man, we went to the theaters. We were in California, and um Mariah, my wife, uh auditioned through the same casting director, Beverly Holloway, uh, that, that cast The Chosen, who, who also cast Unsung Hero. Yeah. And um, she, if some of you remember a couple of seasons ago, it was like the culminating moment of the season, uh, introduced King David and Bathsheba um, in, in sort of a, a throwback. How many years? Is that a thousand years or something from, from the time of Jesus? Right, right. The 400 years? Yeah, something yeah. like that. Anyway. Um, and then episode four, we had the chance to, to go in and sit in the, in the theaters and man i i uh first of all you gotta understand i've partnered with my wife and my brother and my family for my whole life so i cannot afford bias right. um you know everyone says I'm, I'm just so proud of you honey it's like no this is this, these are people that i do life with and I, I i have to speak honestly similar to you for those that i love and care about and and i thought she was magnificent i, I really did it's the best and most grounded presentation that I've ever seen her give. I thought you were, you're so kind and gracious in the way you lead these characters. And it was amazing to see it on the big screen. That's yeah. what I appreciated too. Some people ask like, why would you see Chosen on the big screen? Well, even with Unsung, it's because there's these, these, these moments that need to be a communal, yeah. we're in this together 
and even show the country and the world that this is important. And the theaters have a way of yeah. doing that. And so I was really proud. I was really proud to show up and, and experiencing it. Yeah. And she really was great. And, uh, that's, yeah, that's in season four, which is, uh, it's not quite out on streaming yet. We're working on that, but, uh, but yeah, it was a great theatrical experience. And uh, I remember Joel, you telling me on the set when we first met that, uh, that Mariah and her, I think your parents, I mean, David, uh, I've met your dad a couple of times and he's always been so effusive about the show, but it seemed like you had family members who were in on the show before it was cool, which always meant a lot. Oh my, I told you this before, my, my parents-in-law, uh, and this is part of the reason I was starstruck when I met you, was because season one, when right. you just put it up for the world to watch, it was, they had come to me, I remember going over to their apartment and like this, them sitting us down right. and being like, you have to watch this with us. Like, this right. is the greatest thing ever and crying and all the rest of it. And so, yeah, it's, we've, uh, we've, we've had a, a longstanding romance, uh, D Jenkins and me, uh, <laughs> Yes. Sounds so scandalous. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that's very kind. A little odd, but very kind. Um, so uh, he's speechless. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But with that, I, I, I love you guys. I appreciate you. And uh, let's real quick. Uh, it is Sunday night. How do when when does the film come out? And they don't have to wait until it comes out to start getting tickets. And they shouldn't because uh, tickets are, are, you know, there's literal sellouts happening. So where do people go to get more information yeah, about yeah. Unsung Hero? Un, uh, unsunghero.movie.com is where you can go to get all the information. It is. I think there's no dot .com. I think the dot .movie, dot movie is the dot .com. Sorry, dot .movie. Did I say dot .com? Yeah. My bad. I'll do that again. <laughs> unsunghero.movie. Uh, that's just it. <laughs> And uh, you can go there, find out all the information. It is uh, tickets are available right now, and, and, so, and it's also going out on Wednesday. It goes out on Wednesday, and for, all sorts of different markets. And so it's a cool thing. Obviously, you've got this weird moment of it's officially out uh, April twenty sixth, but uh, pretty much around America, uh, that April twenty fourth, you can come and kind of be the first to see it. There's some ad additional content and different fun things that we've included on that night as well. Yeah, it's also um, a couple of fun facts about the twenty sixth. So this this Friday. Um, we're calling it family day, you know, mother's day is in a few weeks. You got father's day in a few months. We need a good family day. Uh, Friday's also our parents 49th wedding anniversary. Uh, uh D Jenkins will be thrilled to know about that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, which Lionsgate picked the date, which is really thrilling. And man, here's the thing for us and for you. I know, um, we believe that there is a place for these, um, miraculous, um, the great stories, uh, particularly as you're telling, that have ever been told in cinemas, in your homes, and everywhere in between. And so this is our uh, answer to the call for that. Um, and so I've often said, like, if you love your mom, if you love miracles, if you love music, if you love the 90s, there's a bunch of 90s music crammed into this thing. Jesus Jones, Rod Stewart, you know, Seal, Lenny Kravitz, Margot B. Smith, Amy Grant, Striper. Um, yeah. If you love the American dream, this was we're a product of overcoming um, and, and uh, by the grace of God through community and through the local church overcoming. So if you love all those things, if you love your family, we'll see you on family day in the cinemas uh, across the United States. Again, more theaters than any faith or family film has gone into that I know of. Uh, so yeah, that's awesome. uh, pretty exciting. Yeah, so you've heard it from Joel. If you love your mom, see the film. If you don't see the film, it means you don't love your mom. So yes, uh, that's it. That's the, that's it. That's the next, the, the next, the next scale would be if you love Jesus. And yes. that's one that we don't want to. No, that's the chosen. Yeah, that's, that's the, the chosen. chosen. Yeah, if you yeah, love you Jesus, see the chosen. If you don't see the chosen, I just, got, you, the chosen, mom. I just yeah. got your new marketing hook line, uh, yeah. Dallas yeah. Uh, D Jenkins. Sorry. Got it. Got it. All right. Well, appreciate you guys, and uh, thanks so much for coming on. And I will see you soon. And I will be uh, I will be in the theaters soon to see Unsung Hero. Thanks so much, guys, for coming on. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. Um, can I have a role in the chosen? <laughs> One and again, thank you so much for coming on. It's really been great. I appreciate. See you guys. <laughs> appreciate you guys. Yeah, those guys are great, uh, Joel and Luke. I'm telling you, uh, just get, having gotten to know them really well over the last couple of years. They just really have a great heart and a great spirit and are as talented as it gets and have done a gr just their music, their concerts, and now their movie are uh, really, really terrific. And uh, if you have not had the Four King and Country experience, make sure that you do so. And uh, their movie, Unsung Hero, uh, coming out this week. So we always like to, uh, as much as possible, uh, take care of our friends, and uh, but 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 what's cool is we only tell you about things that we actually do believe in, and so uh, we don't we, we're not just a promotional enterprise, but 
uh, the personal connection to the show and uh, and to our Christmas specials. They've they've been involved in both of our Christmas specials with uh, Drummer Boy and Go Tell It on the Mountain. And uh, so we always want to want to be supportive of each other because we're trying to do the same thing. So take a few of your questions, and then I've got something important to share with you. Uh, so stick around for that. Um, but uh, before I take your questions here, just do a quick recap. Uh, the gifts, if you go to thechosengifts.com, www.thechosengifts.com. That was bad. Um, we've got, like, the, the, the primary focus besides, you know, the thing like, like what I'm wearing right now, you know, the 2 plus 5 equals 5,000, and the, the uh, I Was One Way t-shirt that I was wearing earlier in the live stream. Um, we've got all the usual stuff, and you got, some of you were asking about the zip up hoodies and the books and all that. It's all there. Just so so feel feel free to explore. But specifically, we've got these pretty pretty strong uh, Mother's Day discounts, and we're calling them these. There's bundles. There's a ton of different bundles you can get that will save you a lot of money. Again, we really are trying to do uh, one of two things: do something meaningful that that can actually impact your life or the life of someone that you see out in the wild, um, or uh, we're trying to get you stuff as 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 cost effectively as possible because I know it's been frustrating to wait for uh, the season. So, uh, but of course, at the end of the day, uh, how we are able to sustain ourselves as a company is in many ways because we don't have the streamer behind us or the big uh, the the big studio pumping in all the the millions of dollars to do this. We uh, uh, some of these gifts uh, really do help us out, but uh, we don't want to do it unless you are blessed by it as well. But uh, yeah, there's the the uh, coffee package um, that's super, super cool with the, where'd the mug go? Oh, George, uh, Abe took it. The mugs, oh, it's over there. The mugs, uh, with the, with the coffee. Um, and then of course the, uh, this really, really, um, yeah, this is the painting, the really cool painting. Thank you, Bradley. The mug, uh, really cool painting. It's, uh, and on the back of it, it's got a little bit of a, the description and the, and the, 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 the story behind it. Uh, don't let me go. And uh, the calendar that you get free with any with any of the bundles. This is the chosen 2024 calendar. Still not too late. And of course, the books, the devotional books, are a lot of them are part of the uh, bundle. So check them all out. They're really really great. Uh, chosen Con again. Mark that down. We're going to be announcing the dates on May sixth, Monday, May sixth, 10 a.m. Eastern time. Put that in your calendar because that's when the tickets go on sale for Chosen Con. Put that in your calendar and also put the dates of Chosen Con in your calendar. September 20th and 21st. It's a Friday and a Saturday. And then uh, five and two day coming up here on um, five two. Uh, May 2nd. Eight-hour live stream with tons and tons of stuff. It's going to be, you're going to see people live from the set as we are filming, so it's going to be very, very cool. All right, I'll take a few more of your questions before I tell you something uh, important here. Uh, Ashley Floyd asks, I'm curious how far into the New Testament is the show going to cover? Well, the seven seasons of the show cover the Gospels. Now, the ending of season seven will probably get a little bit into the book of Acts, but these seven seasons are focused on the Gospels. Then I will take a nap for about a year, and then we will reevaluate. But uh, uh, we will let you know if and when we have any uh, ideas or plans for other projects. Um, and yeah, I would love to get into the book of Acts and go deeper into the New Testament and deeper into these stories, but a lot's going to have to happen for that to work, obviously, getting all the cast and crew back and all that, uh, but we'll uh, we'll see. But, uh, but yeah, the seven seasons go into the Gospels. Sunny Golf on Twitter on X asks, what do the different numbers mean on the marker board? So I assume she's referring to the clap, you know, called the clapper, uh, whatever it is, what you see sometimes in our behind the scenes videos when someone goes, you know, roll sound, uh, you know, scene one, take four, you know, click. Uh, so those numbers, there's numbers that are, that are what's called time code, which uh, they're going there so that, so that the audio and the video or the audio and the film are in sync. So two things are recording separately. And so the clapper is what they, in post-production, what they make sure that the audio and the video come together at the exact same time and the numbers are the time code of the uh for each of this each of the takes and then when you see scene 213 you know that'll typically mean episode two uh the 13th episode or sorry the 13th scene of that episode and then it'll be the number of takes that we do and so you'll see a lot of gobbledygook on those clappers um charlie mcmahon asks since season five is going to be holy week is eric avari aka nicodemus going to be in season five well, that's a really good question 
Okay, so Patrick, 3088-7310 on Twitter asks, do you plan to address the Bread of Life discourse at all on the series? That's another really good question. Um, Marie Via from the Chosen Insiders page. Uh, yeah, just so you know, I'm usually not going to give away spoilers, and uh, sometimes the answer is no to these things. I'm not going to say that. Sometimes the answer is yes. Um, so, uh, but I promise you, you will enjoy season five. There are a lot of fake chosen pages. Can Dallas Jenkins please take a few moments and correct, pr provide the correct chosen page and chosen insiders page? Okay, so I'm going to say this once. Um, I would contend, and I love you very much, but I would contend that the overwhelming majority of fake chosen sites or fake Dallas Jenkins pages or fake actor pages are quite easy to spot. And so if we try to chase all of them down or tried to explain to you which ones, all of the which ones are fake, uh, there just isn't enough time. There's nothing we can do about them. They get reported, but there's nothing we can do. So I'm just going to encourage you to do the work of knowing when they are fake. Uh, for example, like Noah James's page, there's a fake Noah James page. He plays Andrew. And uh, what they do is they just take Chosen or Dallas Jenkins posts and they just post them as Noah James and then they don't even try. It's like I posted a picture of my wife and I'm like, she's my partner in life and my partner on the show. And then Noah James posts, this, she's my partner in life and partner on the show. Uh, obviously, that wasn't posted by Noah James. So anytime they're asking for money, anytime they're direct messaging you, like if you get a direct message or an invite to follow or an invite to be their friend, it is always, always, always fake. Always. So we have a Chosen Insiders page. If you just look up the Chosen Insiders on Facebook, you'll find us. If you look up the Chosen on Facebook, you'll see the official page because of the blue check mark. Try to look for blue check marks, but not all of them have them. Uh, uh, but the, the fake ones do not have a blue check mark, and the fake ones always, they have a lot of capital letters. It's clearly, it's similar to like when you order something and it comes from China and the instructions are in like a little bit broken English. Uh, that's what these fake pages tend to be. So... Uh, if you get a personal invite to one, ignore it because uh, we don't actually do personal invites or, or direct messages unless we're responding to you. Okay, um, how many episodes will be in season five? Eight episodes come in every season, so it'll be eight uh, this season as usual. Will season five also be shown in theaters? Yes, um, hopefully at least, most likely, but that won't be till next year. Uh, Debbie asks, will the roundtables return as they did with the other seasons? Yes, we have actually already filmed the season four Bible roundtables. Rabbi Jason Sobel, our Messianic Jewish rabbi, uh, Father David Guffey, the Catholic priest, and evangelical scholar Dr. Doug Huffman. The three of us and my, uh, the three of them and myself talk about each of the episodes. We dive deep into the Bible stories. We talk about what we got right, what isn't, uh, was, which, what we tweaked maybe, like in terms of locations and timelines, and then uh, even some of the things we might disagree about. Um, we have a very robust uh, accountability structure for the chosen to make sure that we are not stepping outside of the bounds of plausibility for what uh, what is in the Bible and what could have happened. And uh, the Bible roundtable discussions are always uh, enriching and people absolutely love them. And uh, I can assure you, if you go check out the first three seasons on the chosen app, that's the only place you can find them. You'll get a lot out of them. Um, it's like going to school, but a, but, a, but a really fun, cool school. It's not at all uh, boring, um, and we get a lot of it. I get out of, a lot out of it every single time. So um, I want to close with this. Um, we were on set on Friday night, and around midnight, around 12.30 is when uh, we wrapped, and uh, got some really devastating, devastating news that impacts the Chosen family and, and, and in a lot of ways impacts you. Brad Fogarty is someone who came on board our team uh, a few years ago, um, and uh, he has a whole staff of people that help uh, on The Chosen on set. They help on our tours. They help on our promotional uh, uh, appearances, Chosen Con, all of that. Um, and on his team is a gentleman named Luke, Luke Elfrink. Now, uh, Luke is a talent coordinator with, with Fogarty, um, works with a couple of bands that we've worked with, uh, just a, a general a renaissance man in many ways. Luke has actually t probably taken more pictures of me than anyone in the world, literally. Um, and in fact, if you've gotten a picture with me, chances are uh, po highly possible uh, that uh, he took it. Um, and uh, just a couple of days ago, he was uh, taking all the pictures uh, of the, in, that I was taking with all the, the, the extras, um, the fans who were on set. Uh, Luke experienced, and our whole team experienced, some really, really devastating news. Uh, his wonderful sister, Micah, um, was tragically killed in a car accident um, on uh, Friday. 
And uh, we found out about it as we were near the end of our filming, and I found out about it when I was done. Um, Micah Elfrink was the new program director. She'd been working at uh, Camp Hoblitzel, which is where we film. Uh, most of The Chosen is on that camp, and she's one of the uh, program director. She's the new program director there. I've been working there for a few years. She was the uh, nanny for Fogarty's kids for over 20 years. Um, a deep, deep member of the Chosen family. And uh, my kids, Sam and uh, Elle, uh, worked with her and for her at the camp uh, over the summers. Um, my executive assistant, Steve, his kids worked with her. I mean, it was just, uh, she, is, she was beloved. I, the, you, you will never find and could never find a bad word to be heard about Micah Elfrink. Um, she was very dear to all of us and um, contributed quite a lot to the Chosen family. And uh, she and her brother Luke, just servant hearts. And um, Micah was an avid outdoorsman, a uh, hunter, uh, and, um, and loved children and loved Jesus. And uh, just um, her last, we'll put, put it up on screen here too, her last Instagram post uh, is her doing what uh, she loved. Uh, she had visited uh, Uganda and um, she loved children and just had a huge heart. And uh, it was devastating, devastating news for the Chosen family. And uh, that impacts you, too, because uh, Fogarty, who uh, uh, his, his organization is called Red Letter Management. And they're the ones who, again, when you, if you ever visit the Chosen set, if you go to Chosen Con, uh, his team is out there killing it and uh, absolutely making sure that we are all taken care of and uh, making sure that you're taken care of. And... Uh, Chances are you have been impacted by Fogarty and uh, Luke and Micah in some way, and uh, including the fact that we're able to do this show on this camp that she is such a huge part of. So uh, pray for <laughs> pray for the family and uh, pray for uh, our team. Uh, it's just really a devastating loss, and it's a reminder of how precious life is. And um, this just happened suddenly. Uh, there was there was no warning. There was nothing that she did wrong. It was a, a devastating car accident that happened just like that. And um, she loved the man that we are portraying, uh, and she is with him now. Uh, of course, Jesus, and uh, having a good day today. But uh, it's still sad for the rest of us. And um, as we've portrayed in these seasons, um, uh, God is sovereign, and uh, part of the. Part of what we're, what part, part of the gospels, part of what we're portraying, is that God is sovereign, and that um, the love that God the Father and God the Son have for you um, is immense, both here and in eternity. And I just encourage you to uh, to <laughs> to again stay close to your family and um, and stay close to to Christ, and uh, make sure that uh, you are right with Him and that you. Uh, are always um, pursuing him greatly because he's pursuing you. And she pursued Jesus greatly, and um, and he took her home. And uh, it's, a, it's a loss for us. But uh, we weep with those who weep, and we rejoice with those who rejoice. And there's a lot of weeping going on this weekend and will be for a little while. Um, and we know you would, wanted, would have wanted to know about that and wanted to uh, be part of that. And so thank you for your support and for being part of the Chosen family. That is now one member less, as opposed to this, uh, uh, um, as uh, as of this weekend. So, just wanted to share that with you, and uh, thank you. And I know um, everyone involved loves you and appreciates you, and all the prayers and support that I know you're giving right now, and will continue to give. So, thank you for your time tonight. Remember, it is not your job to feed the five thousand; it is only your job to provide the loaves and fish. I love you, and God bless. <laughs>